On his video, we got the GOAT, the legend himself, Mr. Derek Miner. Y'all stay tuned. Hey, yo, what's going on? This is Ruslan. King's Dream Entertainment, kingsdreament.com. This channel exists to encourage, empower, and inspire you to live out God's dream for your life. We are at Elevation Conference 2019. I've been doing this series, uh, sharing my experiences with CHH, having some of my friends on, and I thought, who better to have on than the man, the myth, Mr. RMG himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Miner. I need a blow horn. <laughs> and Thizzle was in the background creeping in the shot. You can't see him, but yeah. I can. <laughs> How you doing, man? How's your travels? Man, good. Uh, frequent and often a little bit more than I need them to be. Okay. I need to slow down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of traveling. Yeah, it's been good, though. So we've been on this series on this channel talking about CHH, my yeah. love and hate relationship with yeah, CHH. Yeah, I, 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 I done peeped a few. I done peeped and, a few. Uh, We've been talking a lot about this stuff off the scenes. And yeah. Kind of the vision even for this channel is how to have meaningful dialogue and, and just bring some of the stuff to the surface with the hope of helping people. You know yeah. what I mean? So I want to just briefly like break down how long you've been a part of CHH, kind of what you do, yeah. and the shift that we've seen happen that people would attribute as like, oh, everybody's trying to go mainstream shift, yeah. right? But it's actually... From our conversations, not really that. It's it's a it's a deeper shift that's happened. Yeah. And and then I kind of get on on my ideas and solutions. So tell me just background real quick. Yeah, I I think you know well for me I've been in I've been doing I guess C H H for going on ten years I think. Right. Um, came out as so pro. Yeah, I, I came out as mixtape pro. Was fire. Yeah, I did a, I did a couple mixtapes. And then uh, I did an album called Redemption. It got a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the first one on Reach officially, right? No, no, no. That was before Reach. That was before Reach. Yeah, so okay. then uh, Lecrae, I think Lecrae hopped on a song okay. on that joint. And then from there, um, yeah, I, I did two did two uh, a two album deal with Reach. Did two two albums with them. And uh, from that, I've been doing RMG ever since. So. Yeah, and y'all had a, a situation with E1. Yeah, you had, so you had a situation with uh, E1 Empire currently. Yes, I'm with so Empire. So you, you were yeah. kind of, in my opinion, one of the blueprints on how to maneuver in this indie thing. Yeah, I mean, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. But it, yeah. much of it has been just me trying to figure out where my space is yeah. because I never thought I fully fit in the. I kind of felt like I was kind of like. I, I wasn't necessarily a square peg in a round hole when I was with Reach, but I wasn't a great fit sure, at, in, sure, in that sure, space, sure. in their market, right. uh, with right. what they're doing. So it's really been me just trying stuff out. I'm like, all right, we'll see if I can this partner yeah. works or that yeah. partner works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, so, yeah. and Doc, and you and Doc are both, I don't think people understand how much stuff y'all do behind the scenes, mm -hmm. how much y'all look out for new artists. Um, it's specifically helping me. You and Doc have both tremendously man, helped me. Thank you. So um, kudos to you guys for that, man, because I think um, not enough people are doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? And and I don't think it – I feel like you guys, where most people would see competition, yeah. I feel like you guys are trailblazing and seeing community. Right. Well, you can't have – you can't really have competition in a niche. Mm, I mean, it, it's too like, small. It's too small to have competition. So it's yeah. like you're literally like the pie isn't big enough for everyone to get a piece that matters. Uh, so for me, I'm like, well, OK, as we're competing, quote unquote, sure. as artists that are all trying to get our brand. Right. What would it look like if we made Just money with one another? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. As we're competing. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of been always and that's always been my focus, period, uh, yeah. as an artist. That's dope. Business so a couple years ago, uh, CHH. Uh, people would say it was at the peak. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody was happy. Yeah. Uh, kumbaya, my lord. Absolutely. Everybody's fellowshipping. And then right around 2014-ish, yeah. we had the Trayvon Martin, yeah. Mike Brown. Yeah. And it seemed like there became a switch. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Quite honestly, what I believe is... Uh, I don't think Christian rap, well, I guess you could say it's at its peak, mm -hmm. but I think if we're talking in the uh, idea of markets, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at anything about investing, mm -hmm. there's bear markets and then there's bull markets. Okay. And if you get the if you get the bear market, that means it's going backwards. It's not doing well. Mm. Bull means it's going forward, forward. Okay. right? So I think we were in a bull market as far as Christian rap because what was happening was 
at the time when, and I was there, mm-hmm. but at the time of the 116 rise, right. there was a huge push for diverse churches right. from white churches. Like white churches were specifically saying, we have to have to diversify ourselves right. on the outside at least to make people think that we're inclusive, right? Sure. Well, what happens is you see these guys that have this conservative theolo- theology and they're also they also rap. So they're just black enough for people to say, Oh, yeah, okay, we're diversifying. We'll bring some rappers in and all of that. We're <laughs> inclusive, right? And then at the same time, so you check that box, but yeah, then yeah. also we're safe because we're not saying anything about our culture. We really just was sticking to theology. Um uh-huh. and that's kind of what we were passionate about at the time. So uh then you know, Trayvon Martin gets killed and uh then a plethora of black men. Yeah. Get I, I don't know if it's it gets killed. I mean, I, I don't know if them getting killed is what did it because it was like we always knew sure. that black sure. people were police brutality right. and that right. all the of black, that. The black communities tend to be over police. We always knew tend, that. Tend, like tend police be, brutality yeah, was, it was always a thing. a thing. It was a thing. But I think the response from the churches we were going to mm-hmm. is what made us wake up and say, wait a second, mm. hold up, I'm black. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's like not just like yeah. it's like, wait a second, like these are our cousins. Mm-hmm. And I'm, we're all in this like kumbaya, yes, diversity. Sure. But then when we bear our souls and bear our pain, yeah. then what when happens? When the black community was hurting, absolutely, by and large, uh, and we talked about this with Joseph Solomon and and Preston Perry. Yeah. The white conservative theology, the correct theology, whatever you want to call it, that movement, reformed, restless, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Wasn't not were they not only were they not there, but they kind of push back they told us to shut up yeah in essence they told us to shut up they're like yo we don't want to hear that Mm -hmm. like we want you to stick to the theology i'm like that's great but like my cousins are dying like yeah Yeah. just some background on myself like when i was nine years old i saw my grandfather get beat by eight cops Whoa. Like I saw him get beat by like eight cops with billy clubs like really really bad then fast forward to a year ago um, my cousin was uh, she spit on a police officer and they beat her while she was naked in the hospital she's always had mental mental issues she was in the hospital she was in the hospital Whoa. and they were trying to restrain her she was going through a uh, she was going through a mental episode and they beat her while she was naked yeah. this is a woman right yeah. Yeah. so I like for me it's been always in my yeah. face just even yeah. that when I was nine ten years old that kind of crafted my my look at the police I mean he got beat on his own property you know so yeah. it wasn't like he was somewhere he was at home you know yeah. what I mean and, and yeah. uh, or he was at his Jeez. work site work site so I think for me like I think that's why I was so I've been so passionate about it but in that sense that was a sidebar but we got um I think what happened was those guys, Eric Garner, um, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, mm-hmm. um, uh, Mike Brown, they were our Emmett Tills to the civil rights movement mm. for us. It was like, okay, enough is enough. Mm-hmm. We can't just sit here and just pretend this isn't happening right. without speaking. And then that just begins to progress. And I think what happened was with that market, I think just in general in America, mm-hmm. the quest for diverse churches is kind of over. Like no one's really <laughs> talking about that anymore. Uh. They're not. Yeah. They're not talking about that anymore. Yeah. So now, we don't need a black guy to mm-hmm. to to make our churches seem diverse. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's bad to bring that in because you have people are so hard left and hard right. right. And white churches have kind of been like, well, we're gonna stay where we're at, and black churches are gonna be like, we're gonna stay where we're at. So what happens is now you're just seeing Christian raps market for what it actually is worth. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I think even even for me. Um, I think I've been to seven funerals in my yeah. life, or seven or eight, and two of them were of unarmed black men yeah. killed by police. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so people don't know that about me. I don't, I don't talk about that, but I think that's why it's important to have these conversations. Yeah. Um, and, 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 so people could see that because what's going to happen is the pushback is going to be two pushbacks. Yeah. Right? Well, the first pushback is, well, these are isolated issues. Let's let the facts come out. They've never been isolated. Right. Yeah. Right. And they share that just from the black community, the black perspective, that, they, that, that they're not isolated. That we, yeah. as a white person, you can look and look at each situation and say, well, what, what happened here? What happened here? Let's let the facts come out. But 
the black community as a whole is seeing it on a macro level. Yes. You're seeing it through the lens of Emmett Till, which yes. if you don't know what that is, y'all should Google that. You're seeing it through the lens of Black Wall Street. You're seeing it through the lens of the crack epidemic and the war on drugs. You're seeing Absolutely. it through the lens of Rodney King. Absolutely. Um, so so just, just, just break that down for me like you, I want you to say it in your own words that it's not that you can't just isolate them because they're, it's a macro problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the the fatal flaw is with history, right? His story. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening to history only from the lens of my white brothers and sisters, mm-hmm. they're only going to tell their side of the story. Sure. Because it's their side of the story, mm-hmm. and no one wants to admit, yeah, we enslaved, beat, and created. Um, government systems to take advantage of black people, right? But if you listen to black history, that story has never... If you listen to the story of history from black thought leaders, Mm -hmm. that has never... We have never been like, oh, yeah, all of a sudden, things just went crazy. Like, Mm -hmm. since we landed here in slave ships, Mm -hmm. we have always been oppressed. And and it's just been, what type of oppression will you get? Is it going to be Jim Crow? Is it going to be slavery? Wow. It's going to be the prison industrial complex. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just what, 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 which way do you want to sure. be in, oppressed? Sure. Um, do you think so, some yeah. of this also has to do with um, exposure to communities of poverty, right? Because a lot of people, if you're in Montana, if you're, yeah. in, it's there's poverty, but it's a different kind of poverty. Absolutely. But when you're talking about um, going to the jungles and watts going yeah. to the south bronx yes. right going to to, to to some of the slums in atlanta um it's or chicago south yeah. side of chicago it's a, it's a different multi-generational poverty that i think a lot of people don't understand that violence violent all the things we don't like as, as a society violence unwanted pregnancies all these things are exactly a symptom and a byproduct of, yeah. of deeper issues in the right. community yeah so when you look at um that's a great question. Like when you look at black history in general, mm-hmm. um, like, yes, a poor person is a poor person. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the issue with black people has been that for us, we've been systemically um, prevented from actually getting getting justice one. But then also in getting justice from also gaining wealth. So I just literally yes. saw a story about yes. a preacher in Mississippi who had 270 acres mm-hmm. of land in mm-hmm. Mississippi in the 19 early 1900s, right? Mm-hmm. So what happens is uh, some white brothers, they want his land, mm-hmm. so he's not going to sell it to them. So they just take him out back and they they beat him to death and they cut his tongue out. Oh. And then they tell his family, you have 10 days to get off the property. Well, what happens is they get off of the property and then the white guys come in and take that 270 acres mm-hmm. and the justice system backs them up, backs them up. by. Was, how long ago was this? This was in the ni- early 1900s. Okay. So uh, I, have to, I don't remember his name, uh, the guy, but but anyhow, what happens is the uh, there was one guy who was on trial mm-hmm. by all white jury mm-hmm. and he gets off scot-free. Mm. So the land is taken. And black people, and then Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street was one of the most. It's funny because people say, uh, "Why don't black people, you know, build their own communities, et cetera, et cetera?" Well, they when did. we did, yeah. it gets bombed right. by the actual National Guard right. and the police. Black Wall Street was one of the most prominent right. black communities. Or uh, people like people don't know this is uh, where Central Park is in Manhattan was actually a black community, hmm. and Matt, uh, New York wanted a park, um, hmm. so they just claimed. Um, I think it's called uh, Eminent Domain. They claim Eminent Domain, wow. and they move all the black people out and, and put Central Park there. So uh, all the time you see these situations happening right. Right. where uh, black people have been systemically or redlining where we uh, or where we were um, discriminated against with uh, loans and different things like that. We know what's the quickest way to build wealth in yeah. America yeah. is owning your home because it, it gains wealth. Right, but right, right, right. when you won't loan to black people, right, right. or when you only will loan them in to be in horrible yeah. areas, then that prevents them generation to, to be able to have generational wealth. A home is something that you can tangibly hand to the uh, hand to your children. Right. So I think that that's the, the difference in the poverty has been systemically, right, right we've so, been oppressed so, in that way. 
So you just, that's a lot of education. You just give yeah. it about a, a century, I think the last hundred years, you broke down yeah. how the black community has been affected differently and impacted differently by poverty than the white community. Absolutely. Right? So I think one, hopefully that educated some of you guys. Here's going to be the second pushback. Okay. And, 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 and I, there's so many ways to answer this, but I, I even hate asking this, but I know, I know I got viewers that are going to say, um, but Derek, uh, well, what about black on black violence? Yes. As if no one in the black community is addressing black on black yes. violence. As if no one in the black community is marching to end black on black violence yes. and, and doing their part. And as, as you are, whether it's creating local economic opportunity for other yes. businesses, other people, um, talk about that and just like how silly that pushback is. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, the first thing I would say is just statistically, if you go on the government website where it talks about uh, crime, mm -hmm among people uh white people harm white people more than they harm anyone else mm, black okay. people are going to harm black people more than they harm right, anyone else right. asians will harm asians more than anyone else right. because of proximity we live in communities right right so in order for me to go out of my community to hurt someone right like that's that's that, we're not going to do that because i don't have any dealings with people that don't look like me. right your interaction you see right. what i mean yeah. but but you know if this guy took my wife or my girlfriend mm -hmm. then we get into a fight whatever so right. so that there's that effect um so the issue i think what people think when we talk about like police violence mm -hmm. the issue is not necessarily just the over policing of our of our community right. but it's the fact that when someone is caught red-handed red-handed doing something wrong there's no justice right there is the root issue of what we're seeing it's right. like uh, you know, police are fallible people. Like they, they, ha they make mistakes. And it's a tough profession. Of, it's a hard profession, yeah. right? Yeah. So, if someone makes a mistake, I'm just saying you need to be held accountable right. for that. Right. Let's not create all of these different ways for why this police officer right. should not be held accountable. Right. And that happens often right. in the black communities. But if we're talking about also with uh, with black on black crime, I, I think it's the idea of there's also churches that live in black communities that are fighting against that right. every day. Yeah. There's so many organizations right. and nonprofits right. that are fighting against that every day. So what we're saying is, right. hey, we're gonna handle our business. Right. You stop oppressing us as we're handling our right. business, right? right, right, right. Um, but I also don't, I don't see when a white person is taken advantage of, people don't use white on white crime. Right to say, well, why don't you solve white on white crime right. before we solve this black person picking right, right, on this right, white right, person? Right, right, right. So that's a horrible thing to say because the reality is you're never going to solve black on black crime, right. white on white crime. Right. You're not going to solve all those things. Right. But what we can do is create a justice system that is fair and equal for everyone. Right. And right. that's the issue that's here. Right. So right. that's a... That's a, that's, that's yeah. a um, That's a distraction from the actual issue when someone brings that up. Right. And the reality is... I just expect police officers to behave better than criminals. Absolutely. Like, I don't think that's a crazy expectation. Not at all. To, to, to expect people who took an oath to, to protect and serve. Absolutely. To protect and serve. Absolutely. To, to do that with the utmost integrity and to be and to live above reproach. Granted, they're, Absolutely. they're fallible and they're people sure. and all that kind of stuff. Sure. So I think um, hopefully a little bit of what's happened is a little bit of education a little bit of enlightenment. Um, the, the 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 tough part is then when people aren't aware and they're not engaged. Yeah. On a subconscious level, they tend to just be dismissive. Yes. Right. And so it's like, well, what about black on black crime? Well, what about this? But well, what yes. about that? Well, why are there so many uh, fatherless black children? Yes. And all that kind of stuff. And so. Which is actually a, a part of a system, a, a systemic right, right. issue which, as well. Which, yeah, <laughs> which even we fatherlessness. Which was yeah. Unpack. But, but my, my question. Um, is that me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 I gotta go perform. We're gonna finish this because I got a question that's really important.